is going on today, guys? I mean, what is going on today, guys? Welcome back to the show. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Jay. I'm extremely excited today. I've got way too much caffeine in my system. And also, it's episode two of Sunday Sit Down. Let's go. So grab yourself a cup of coffee, grab a cup of hot tea, grab whatever you want to drink. I don't give a damn. 4K, 24 frames per second. The sun just went down on my shit. Can't get off. Well, we're gonna keep rolling with it because we gotta get this done. Gotta get it done. Just spit on myself. Nice. Start over already. See what we got so far and now we're gonna play it back and uh, add a track because that ain't whack wow how many times can I rhyme that all right we're gonna keep going we're gonna keep rolling with it uh, throw in a little fort and Cali you guys are just coming along for the ride here basically sorry about that uh, we're just gonna roll with it guys I don't know what to tell you a couple of things more distortion and some kind of a delay reverb both holy I don't need ping pong. Still rolling? All right, beautiful. Nice, nice. All right, we're gonna do a quick Haas effects, guys, because I don't really wanna play the rhythm twice. Being lazy. Uh, uh, boom. Twice. Pan. Pan. And I'm squinting because I can't see without my glasses. He needs more mid range or less. He needs more mid range. And yeah, delay up a little bit, and we're still rolling. It's, it's pretty good. What do you guys think? I don't know. We're gonna we're gonna run through it one last time, and then I'm done. Last time, last time. Here we go. Working on a new uh, little riff here. Let me know what you guys think. Kind of sucks. Sort of, kind of. So first things first, that little intro track that you saw me kind of running through in Logic Pro, uh, that was just a fresh new idea I had popping in my head and I wanted to make sure that I laid it down as quickly as possible because you want to strike while the iron is hot. That's the first thing I'm gonna talk about. Songwriting inspiration, uh, riff writing inspiration, all that stuff. Basically for me what happens is if I get inspired by something new, I hear something or see something that just kind of evokes an idea in my head or I get a new riff idea in my head, the first thing I want to do is immediately go to Logic Pro, open up a new session, and just lay down some tracks. I don't care if they sound like garbage, they're sloppy as, you know, as can be. I don't really care. I just want to make sure that the idea is put down. It's kind of similar to like writing lyrics. Basically, if you've got something in your mind that you're working through and you're getting some ideas, you know, a few lines going, make sure you write it down. Make sure you put it in your phone as quickly as possible because you just don't want to miss that spark, that small sliver of opportunity where that inspiration hits. It's fresh in your mind, you're feeling it, you wanna make sure to get it down quickly. So that's, that's what I did there. Um, it's a brand new idea, obviously it's just one riff of a song. It's, you know, it's not even a portion of a song, it's just a tiny sliver, but I kinda of play it over and over to make sure I have it you know, down pat. I find that's a better 
mode of operation for me to work on. Rather than in the old days, I would sit there and play it over and over for two, three hours to make sure I memorized it. So that the next day I would go back and have the memory of like what the rhythm was or whatever. You know, that's just kind of silliness. So it's so easy. It's so nice. You know, grab a tape recorder, use your voice memo on your phone, anything, just to make sure you get the idea down. And, you know, you can work on it later. You can work on it next month. You can for, you can brain dump it, basically, you know. Just put it out of your mind. You've got it down somewhere. You can reference it later when you need to, and you're good to go. I love the I love the gent-style riffage, man, basically. Uh, John Brown, Ollie Steele, these kind of guys. You know, the rhythms that they play are so intricate and so diverse that I'm kind of trying to teach myself how to play rhythms that way, how to write rhythms in that vein. And, uh, you know, I'm getting there. Obviously, I'm still a work in progress. I, I know that. But, you know, a guy my age, you wouldn't think is writing gent riffs, right? You think I'm going to be playing 60s, 70s, and 80s, and that's it. And while I love that music, I really want to play the modern stuff because I want to play something that the, the young people of today are going to listen to and, and thrive on and, and want to go see in a band. You know, that's the kind of stuff I'm getting at. So, yeah, songwriting inspiration comes in all forms. And I'm curious to know what you guys do. You know, how do you start off a new song? Or how do you start off a new rhythm? Do you, do you base it off of a chord progression? Do you base it off of a tempo, uh, a specific key? Maybe you're just comfortable in playing E minor, and that's fine. There's no problem with that. You know, if you're somebody who doesn't have a lot of music theory, you're going to gravitate toward the E, A, D, all those open string keys, and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that at all. So I'm just curious to know, how do other people write their songs, you know, when you come up with something new? A new rhythmic pattern, it's usually trying to incorporate one or two techniques that are a little challenging for me so that it takes some effort to, to play what I'm playing, you know, and that might, what I was playing there might seem kind of simple to you, or maybe it's not, but for me, it's, it's moderate. You know, the, the, the technical aspect is kind of like, that's first and foremost for me. I want something that's a little challenging. That's a little bit interesting to watch. If you were, um, you know, let's say I'm at a show and I'm up on stage and somebody's watching me play. I want it to look cool, man. I want to, you know, I'm not, I don't want to just sit there and hold a power chord for two measures. You know, that's, there's a time and a place for that, right? I, I want to be the guy who's doing stuff and you're looking at it like, oh, shit, that looks cool. Yeah, so songwriting for me, get it down the DAW as quickly as possible. Just record some sloppy, I don't care if it's sloppy takes. I mean, those garbage, those takes are garbage right there, basically. There's not much going on, but the idea is there. I can re-record it later. You don't want to quantize everything to the grid completely all the way through. You might want to do it a little bit here and there, but you lose the vibe and the feel of the actual human playing the instrument if everything is perfectly, precisely quantized all the way through the track. And that goes for rhythm guitar, bass, and drum. There's got to be that, those little tiny minor details that you hear from track to track, and especially in the rhythm guitar with the palm muting and stuff. Sometimes you're going to be off by, you know, a couple milliseconds. Anyway, Sunday sit down, too much coffee, I need to take it down a notch, let's chill, let's start over. Okay. First things first, Bring Me the Horizon. One of my favorite newer bands, I just discovered them two years ago. So back in late 2020, I believe, they had announced that they were going to do four uh, EPs over the course of the next year. Well, that failed to happen. They released one, which is uh, post-human survival horror. And I believe the theme of the, of the album was basically having to do with, you know, the big, you know what, that's going around the world right now, the whole big issue. And the album is great, you know, start to finish. And it really isn't an EP, it's really a full length album. And I think that they came to realize that they were gonna do more involved projects like that. And they were gonna do complete albums with complete themes. So uh, needless to say, we haven't got the next three EPs and it, it looks at this point like they're working on an album. So they did drop Die For You over the last month or two. It's decent. It's not really my vibe. You know, I'm not into the whole hip hop trap stuff. I mean, I feel like that's more catering, pandering to the 15 year olds. You know, they want to hear all the same stuff. Every beat sounds the same in every song. I'm not into that so much. I want them to kind of go back to their uh, metal roots, you know, their um, metal core, grind core. I don't know what you call it. I don't, I don't know all these different core, night core, death core, grind core. I don't know the difference, but they're one of these bands that makes an effort to specifically make every song or every album different from the last. And I love that. I love groups that can just break out of the shell, break out of their little niche, their little genre, and go in different directions. I mean, that just shows, that shows the extent of your musical capabilities, essentially. Another group that does it, 
really, really well, in my opinion, is 30 Seconds to Mars. I love them. And every song and every album is a different genre. It's, it's not all the same thing. And I love groups that do that. They just kind of break out of that mold. They show the world, we're diverse. We can do this, 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 and this. Whereas some people are just, it's one thing and one thing only. Every song sounds the same on the album. It gets old quick, right? It's very monotonous. So yeah, those are two groups that I'm really into these days uh, as far as new, newer music goes. Where's the next super group? I don't think that's gonna happen again. We don't consume music the same way that we used to 10, 20 years ago. We don't buy the CD, we don't buy the album. Sit down on your floor, put your headphones on, listen to it full length, start to finish. Hold the pamphlet in your hand, look at the pictures, read the liner notes. We don't do that anymore. It's a less tangible experience. It's just turn it on, it's an MP3 format, which sucks, in case you don't know, MP3 is a very compressed audio file. It does not sound as good as regular audio CD file, which is a larger, more open uh, file source. And uh, that's how we consume music. So all the young kids today, the people, the younger generations, you guys are listening to music. You don't even realize <laughs> what you're listening to. The MP3 format is not nearly as engaging and as authentic sounding as audio CD, even as vinyl, uh, analog, it just doesn't sound the same. You're missing out. The experience isn't there. It's not the same experience. Yeah, I can say it. I'm old enough that I was actually watching MTV the first day that it aired. You can look it up. Go Google it. The first date that MTV went live or went on the air, I was watching it at my friend's house. I'm that old. But that being said, I've always kept current with the current music that's out there because I always had MTV, which is always playing the current music. Until now, of course, there's no more music on music television. It's all stupid shows, you know, Teenage Mom and all that crap, which I couldn't care less. But while they were still playing music, I was always current. I was always enjoying and liking and buying and consuming the current music of the day, which is amazing because somebody my age, which I'm not gonna say my age, but you can tell the gray beard, I'm old enough. Yeah, I would say this, definitely put aside a couple of hours a week if you can, just for yourself, to play your guitar. Either practice, work on a new song, jam with a band if you guys are working, you know, working together, collaborating to do a band project. Put that time aside, structure your time well so that you can be productive with it. It's gonna take a lot of work and a lot of effort, but make sure you do it because every step of the way gets you a little bit closer to your dream. So my two goals for this year are this. The first one is a lot easier. It's, it's, it's to hit the 1,000 subscriber mark, which means all of you folks out there watching <laughs> this video, please consider subscribing. It really helps out and I'm trying to grow the channel. I'm trying to write some music that I can put on the streaming platform soon. And my goal is to have it done by the end of the year. So. I would like to have an EP's worth of music that I'm proud to put out there into the world on the streaming platforms by the end of this year, 2022. All right, guys, I gotta be somewhere at two o'clock, so I gotta get going. I'll talk to you soon. See ya!